welcome to the continued practice. Um, so how about we go around, since it's a smaller group, we can go around and uh, maybe introduce ourselves with our name, uh, our pronoun. Um, I think you may all be in the same area, but maybe your um, land ancestors where you're calling in from. And then maybe take a breath in and notice what, what's happening in your body right now. Maybe you can actually come back to your body and just name what's happening there. Maybe a word or two that you might notice that you're bringing into the space. Um, so we can, I can start. Um, uh, Maricela, she and they, I am calling in from the ancestral lands of the Piscataway people known today as Baltimore, Maryland. And the energy I'm bringing is a little settling and hopefulness. Uh, Marisela bowing out. Stacy, I can, I can go. I've figured out how to unmute myself. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. And I apologize for not being able to be on screen and not being able to give uh, and reintroduce Maricela. Thank you so much for joining us again. I um, am in Western Wisconsin right now, and I'm not certain uh, of the ancestry of the land. I typically reside on um, the territory of the Anishinaabe and Dakota peoples colonially known as Minneapolis. And uh, my energy is a mixed bag, I'm anxious and excited and uh, allowing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Dear community, I think everyone has had a chance to introduce themselves and bring themselves into the space. You know, it's um, it's just good to know who's in the circle, um, just for many reasons, um, safety and, and knowing, um, and also so we can, um, whatever it is we're bringing, we can just lay into the arms of the circle, the energy of the circle, and the energy of the circle can take care of it. Um, and that means whether it's a, a challenging energy or a, you know, great flowing energy. It all gets taken care of together. Um, so thank you. And um, let's sit together, huh? Let's let's do that thing called sitting meditation that that we we say is a path to enlightenment. Um, and let's let's practice it. Let's get on that path, or let's um, step back in the path. Um, we sort of, we sort of, we're on it all the time, right? In awareness. And then when we come back to the breath with intention, um, we sort of dip into it a little more. So let's dip. We can sit for, um, let's sit for 30 minutes, if that's okay with everyone. I'll invite three sounds of the bell. And I, I imagine everyone who comes through brings what practice they usually do. So I'm if you bear with me, I'm bringing, I'm bringing the practice that we usually do. So um, just enjoy it, you know, like drop all the, the uh, rigidity of what our tra each tradition is supposed to do and just, just enjoy. Yeah. So uh, I'll invite three sounds of the bell when we begin to begin with, and then two sounds when we're finished. And I'll do some guided for the first 10, 12 minutes or so, and then the remainder of the 30 minute will be in silence. So everybody gets a little bit of their favorite way to sit in meditation.
we can come home to the body. Let's first come home up to the body, the sensation of the body outside. So let's notice the area where the sole of the feet may be touching on something, maybe the shoe or the, the earth or the ground, or if we're sitting in the lotus posture, we may be touching against the thigh or the calf. So let's just notice that. Let's just get interested, just get keenly interested in what does it feel like against the sole of the feet, wherever it's making contact. And just notice, is it pleasant? Is it unpleasant? Is it neutral? Or maybe there's a sensation that comes to mind when you bring your awareness. So we just let the distractions fall away and just, what's the feeling here in this bottom of the feet? Just that. And then we can notice the other areas where our skin is making contact with the surface, maybe the back of the thighs against a chair or a cushion. And, and again, noticing what's it feel like? The bottom, maybe the lower back as it may be touching against a chair or a surface. If we're leaning against something, maybe the, the back of the shoulder blades. And the, the forearms, maybe the forearms resting on the thigh or the chair. Noticing what does it feel like in that area where there's contact. And you can even lift your arm up and notice the change in the sensation and then gently rest your arm back down and notice what happens when it makes contact with the surface. And maybe the palm of the hands or the back of the one hand resting in the palm of the other, noticing the sensation there. And we can, if we're resting one hand in the other, we can gently drag one hand against the other on the surface of the other hand. And again, notice the sensation. Notice what happens when you lift one hand off the other and then placing it back down gently again. And the difference in the sensation Just paying attention, focusing the mind on this body, outside the body. Now we can bring awareness inside the body, and we can do so by following our breath. We can breathe in from the nose, noticing the breath energy as it enters the body, into the chest, and down into the belly. Maybe we notice an expansion of the chest, a distension of the belly. And as the breath leaves the body, we can notice these anchor points, the belly might contract, the chest contracts, maybe we notice the breath energy leaving from under the nose, from the top of the lip, 
And we continue to do that with the breath coming in. We can, in our mind, say in, nose, chest, belly, out, belly, chest, and nose. Or we might find one place where we notice the breath more. And letting that be our anchor. Might be under the nose or the chest or the belly. Whatever that is for you. Allow that noting to help you focus and come back. We can cultivate healing in the body with the breath. Bringing awareness of the breath and following this breath energy through the entire body. Letting this refreshment of the breath, this healing gentle power of love in the breath. Heal this body. Breathing in from the nose with this energy. And following it just like we were doing into the chest, to the belly and extending it down into the pelvic bowl. Refreshment. Groundedness down to the thighs. Opening healing down through the knees and the legs and to the feet. Feeling this refreshment, can you notice this sensation in the bottom of the little toe on the right foot? Can you feel the breath energy there as it expands into the cells and the DNA? on the left ankle, in the bone, bringing that energy of awareness and refreshment. Paying attention to the body. Loving every cell in the body. With the breath energy. Imagine the energy surrounding a cell and bathing it. Extending this energy from the chest across the shoulders, down the back, down the back body to the spine, and down.
down the arms, the shoulders, to the fingers, feeling this energy in the palm of the left hand as it spreads into the fingernail of each finger on that left hand. Can you feel that energy? Bring the breath, refreshing energy down the right arm, the elbow, the wrist, the knuckles of the third finger of this right hand. Can you feel that energy of love moving through the fingers? Loving every cell in this body. The areas of tension, the areas of pain, the areas of spaciousness, areas of softness. Loving all these areas unconditionally. Body in the body. Extending this energy of awareness and love gently from the back of the neck over the head, the skull, coming over the forehead, around the eyes, these weary eyes, these bright eyes, these beautiful eyes, around the nose around the mouth and the jaw. Loving every cell in this body. All the beautiful pigments and tones of the skin, all the beautiful shapes of those eyes the lips, the nose, the bodies. Every hair on the body, every hair on the head, without discrimination, loving. Healing. Feeling the breath suffuse this entire body from the top of the head, the crown of the head down, the neck, the shoulder, fingertips, the front and the back body, flowing, draping, suffusing down the torso into the lower body, down into the toes. Feeling sinking deep into the body, feeling this energy, caressing, taking care, acknowledging and embracing everything that's in the body, all the complexities. bringing a lightness that emanates out from the center of the body, this lightness, bringing in light and radiating the light of the body.
allowing this lightness that we cultivate to emanate from the heart space to the front, to the back, above and below. Relating to all beings. can continue to radiate this out in the second part of our meditation. If we become distracted, just bring the mind back to the lightness inside, the love inside, the refreshment inside. And when we've gathered that up, we can continue to radiate it out.
So thank you, Sangha. And we can bring some um, awareness back to the outer body by um, gently rubbing the palms together and continuing our practice, our mindfulness practice by just noticing the sensations as we do this. Maybe we notice the warmth as we create friction and we can share that with intention at the other part of the body, the face, we can feel the warmth on the face, right? On the eyes. And we're bringing this awareness and this love, right? To the head, maybe gently massaging the back of the neck and the shoulders where we carry so much tension and the arms and just a little love squeeze, right? And you just imagine that everything counts so that as you're bringing this awareness to the cells in the front body and side body and back body, that the cells are actually responding to your touch. Just for a moment, imagine that. And let that hold you. The bottom, the thighs and the knees and the calves and the shin and the feet. Just imagine that the cell that you touch with this intention actually feels it and receives it. And then it shifts everything. So we can continue our mindfulness practice. Um, we, those who are able, we can stand and do a couple minutes of mindful movement to get the circulation, again, being kind to the body, and then we'll practice just a couple minutes of slow walking to continue to be aware of movement, mindful movement. So we'll stand if we're in a place to do that. And just um, use the breath. So when we breathe in, we can just take the arms up and just extend the tips toward the heavens, this the torso of the pelvis, and with the breath out, we can do this if we're seated, right? And we bend over to the right. We don't collapse the spine. We actually extend it, the head toward the side wall. And breath in, bringing that energy into the body, and breath out, leaning over, bending to the left, extending out. And breath in, brings us back to center, lifting up and breath out, releasing that all in awareness, right? And let's do a twist so we can put the hands on the, on the waist if we like. And then with the breath in, lifting up again, lifting this torso up out the pelvis. Imagine we're just feeling the vertebrae, a little more space in between each one. And with the breath out, we're twisting to the right. And the whole body twists, the lower spine, middle, upper head, eyes. Moving to the right. And breath in brings us to center. And breath out, twisting to the left. And breath in back to center and releasing and we can do a gentle back bend so we can bring the palms on the lower back or we can take it up in the air whatever is um, nourishing for you breath in takes us up again lifting the torso up out that pelvic bowl hands up in the air if you're doing it like that and then with the breath out just a gentle back bend starting in the lower spine and the head is last And breath in brings us back up and breath out, releasing all that. And our last one is a forward fold. So this can be as much and as little as you like. Um, breath in, arms go up 
and with the breath out, extending the body first forward, where the fingers are reaching to the sidewall, and we're horizontal, and then slowly draping the body down, the hands reach to the floor, the earth, the head hangs gently. And again here, maybe you feel this space opening up between each vertebrae. Maybe you can even visualize that. And then the breath in slowly brings us back up to standing. And let's just shake all that out, just shake it out. So shake the arm, just let it all go. Shake the left arm, the right arm, right? Shake your head, shake your cheeks, shake your body, shake your right leg, your left leg. If you need to hold on to something, do that. Shake what you were sitting on. Well, we sit so much these days, you really know you, you need to shake that, right? Whether you dance every day for five minutes, just shake it all. Let it all go. Imagine things are going drip, drip, drip into the earth, that which doesn't serve you. Drip, 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 drip. All right. Letting it all go. So let's practice slow walking or walking meditation. And we can do this in a five foot square place or bigger if you like we'll just do this for a couple minutes and the invitation is to with a breath in we take one step with mindfulness and with the breath out another step and we just follow our steps breath in one step breath out and we try to just stay with our step and our breath right mindfulness of movement and when we come to a stop if we're going to turn, let's just stop and breathe in and out and in your mind, standing, standing. And when it comes time to turn with the breath in, turn. One foot turns, the other foot turns. And just like that, mindful movement of the body and standing. Enjoy your steps and bite two bells when it's time to, to stop.
to their community. Thank you for your practice. Um, so what I wanted to share today was um, uh, what we call in our tradition, the contemplations on the five mindfulness trainings. So in our tradition, uh, we've interp interpreted the five mindfulness trainings um, from the five precepts, right? Um, no, no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no lying. Uh, um, and and no intoxicants. And so we've interpreted those as the five mindfulness trainings. And then last year, we then commented on these five trainings uh, it, within this global pandemic and this racial violence, this increased racial violence, or I should, maybe I should say this increased awareness of racial violence that has been occurring in our in our communities. So I thought it might be nice given this visual to share this with this community as a jumping off or a continuation of how we can take our precepts directly into what is happening in our society around the pandemic and racial violence and social injustice. And so I'll share my screen. And what I'd like to do in, is invite us all to share. We can read. Um, there's five of them. There's an introduction and five of them, and then a, a kind of closing. So that's what seven. There's eleven of us. Um, on the, I think uh, Stacy on the phone won't be able to see. So there's more than enough for us to share. So. Um, please feel welcome to read, which as we go through, just volunteer yourself and read. And uh, if it's too long or um, brings up a lot of stuff for you, just read where you can and stop and someone else can pick it up. And then what time is left, we can just share what what's going on for us. So let's share here, share the screen. And so we, we, we named this the Contemplations on the Five Mindfulness Trainings, a new paradigm for racial justice and the global pandemic. Uh, I'll be happy to start with the, um, what you might call the, I'll read the first two paragraphs of the preamble and then maybe someone can pick up the next two and then we go into the actual five trainings. Let us open to a new and deeper way of understanding the five mindfulness trainings, guiding principles for mindful and ethical living, which call us toward individual and collective awakening, compassion and peace. We are aware that we are interconnected. What happens in Wuhan, China affects people in New York City. What happens to the black body affects all bodies. We are called forward. The global pandemic is a gateway to suffering worldwide, disproportionately impacting Black people, Indigenous people, and people of color who face poverty, sickness, displacement, and death. They, we are not alone. Our lives and livelihood are interconnected. We are called forward. We cannot exist independent of our low-wage workers healthcare workers, unhoused people, single mothers, undocumented people, the unemployed and underemployed. If one such person lives on the knife edge of racial, ethnic, societal, social, structural, and systemic oppression and discrimination, we are all affected. We are all called forward. The practitioner, practitioner. Go ahead, ahead. please. <laughs> Go ahead. The, the practitioner dwells in the now, recognizing equanimity and instability, discrimination and non-discrimination, 
ill being and well being, practicing right view and engaged through compassionate action, aware of the cycle of racial, ethnic, and social inequities and discrimination, we courageously turn to practice wholeheartedly. We are called forward. Lighting a stick of incense, listening to the sutras, sitting upright and solid, palms joined, the practitioner looks within and in concentration, the path and fruit of skillful action is revealed. We are called forward. Speak aloud these words with the Sangha voice, a true river of understanding. The first mindfulness training, acknowledging beauty as reverence for life. Aware of the suffering caused by oppression and generational harm based on racial, cultural, social, and ethnic inferiority and superiority and its resulting structures of injustice and harm. I acknowledge the beauty and violence inherent in life. I vow to resist being complacent in systems and structures that continue to perpetrate violence and hatred instead of reverence of life for marginalized groups. I recognize that each person contributes to my individual and our collective awakening and the co-creation of a world that celebrates and affirms differences and similarities. All living beings can teach me something. When I remember to pause, breathe, listen deeply with a calm and open heart and mind and ask myself, is there more or what else is here with me? I honor and respect all life guided by right view and right energy. Second mindfulness training, belonging and connecting as true happiness. Aware of the suffering caused by ignorance and aversion of my own and others' racial, ethnic, cultural, and social history, its legacy and how this affects me, whether I am aware of it or not, I am committed to connecting to these histories. I know that turning toward these histories with an open heart is my journey of awakening to the true belonging. I will take the time to learn the history of the racial and ethnic group with which I identify, as well as for the other socially constructed racial and ethnic groups. Aware that there is no genetic or biological difference between different racial and ethnic groups, and that these identities were constructed by one group to establish dominance over others. I will turn toward racial and other forms of othering with an open heart and compassionate action. I know that this history has led to, led, no, led to fragmentation inside and outside body and mind and brought much suffering to all beings. I vow to transform the suffering through the practice of connecting with an open heart. I will notice when emotions of belonging and othering arise, and I will ask myself why. Whatever feelings, perceptions, or mental formations arise, I will embrace and when needed, 
engage with love and action. I'm committed to practicing right resolve, right speech, right action, and right livelihood so I can help relieve this legacy of racial and social suffering. I will practice looking deeply to see that true happiness is not possible without true connecting, leading to belonging and understanding. The third, third mindfulness training, cherish, cherishment as true love. Aware of the suffering caused by discrimination and oppression, I vow to understand its roots within my consciousness, consciousness and my body and the collective body of the Sangha and larger society. I vow to recognize the ways in which I have benefit or not benefited explicitly or implicitly from systems and structures that foster discrimination and injustice. I am aware of the legacy of violence, especially unlawful police violence, perpetuated against black people, indigenous people, people of color, differently abled people, people of various gender identities and expressions and sexual orientation, and others who are marginalized. I acknowledge the lived experience of all people to deepen my capacity for understanding and for greater compassionate action. I'm aware that narrowly constructed prevalent interpretations of intimate relationships constrain how we cherish each other in our expression of love, leaving many further isolated and alienated. I am committed to looking tenderly at my suffering, knowing that I am not separate from others and that the seeds of suffering contain the seeds of joy. I am not afraid of bold love that fosters justice and belonging and tender love that seeks peace and connection. I cherish myself and my suffering without discrimination. I cherish this body and mind as an act of healing for myself and for others. I cherish this breath. I cherish this moment. I cherish the liberation of all beings guided by the wisdom and solidity of the Sangha. This is my path of true love. The fourth mindfulness training, vulnerability as loving speech and deep listening. Aware that vulnerability is the essence of our true nature, our humanness, I vow to risk listening and speaking non-judgmentally and understanding and understanding and compassion to alleviate suffering and support peace in myself and others. I vow to live with empathy, compassion, aware and awareness, and to listen for understanding rather than disagreement. When I've hurt others through my unskillful action or speech, I vow to practice making a good apology that acknowledges what I've done and offers sincere regret, knowing that this supports the other person and me. I am committed to speaking that speaking that aligns with my highest aspiration and encourages honesty and truthfulness. I am committed to generous and courageous listening that bridges differences and supports understanding of others who may be different from me. I am committed to taking mean, meaningful steps to become a true instrument of peace and to help others in this uh, to do the same. When I am not able to, to understand the experience of others, I vow to come back to my breath um, and my body and offer myself gentle patience while learning to support myself in developing greater awareness and skill. I vow to practice awareness of my beliefs, perceptions, and feelings, aversions, and desires, and to take refuge in mindful breathing and in the Sangha to support greater stability, peace, and understanding. Through my practices of vulnerability, patience, forgiveness, and deep listening, I know that my speech will be guided by love and understanding. Practicing in this way supports right speech and right action and guides me to, sorry, I can't, I can't move mine down for some reason. Uh, thank you, <laughs> it guides me to right insight. Thank you.
aware of fifth mindfulness training. Welcoming is true nourishing and healing. Aware of the suffering caused by the consumption of an inadequate history of racial and ethnic forms of social segregation. I am committed to healing myself and the world by welcoming and practicing with this awareness. I will notice how my thoughts, perceptions, feelings, words, and actions may have been influenced by this inaccurate history. I will look deeply to understand how both physical and mental health for myself, my family, and my society have been influenced by embracing and denying this racial, social, and ethnic history of inferiority and superiority and its legacy of inequities and injustices. I will cultivate joy to support me toward individual and collective wholeness. I will practice mindfulness of the four kinds of nutriments to become aware of how edible foods, sense impressions, volition and consciousness are all influenced by this history. Practicing with right energy and right resolve, my right action of consumption will include awareness of certain websites, electronic games, TV programs, films, magazines, books, and conversations, and how they continue to foster wrong perceptions of racial, ethnic, and social injustices. My understanding of interbeing supports my conscious consumption that sustains a healthy understanding of difference, one that does not oppress or discriminate. This right insight will preserve peace, joy, and bring healing in my body and consciousness and in the collective body and consciousness of my family, my society and the earth. To assure that my descendants do not live in a racially, ethnically and socially unjust world, I commit to diligently practicing with true welcoming on this path to nourish and heal myself, the Sangha and society. Five mindfulness trainings keep us centered in life's storms and joys and remind us that life is a precious gift. The trainings are a path to liberation and transformation. Practicing these trainings supports us to racial and ethnic reconciliation and social change and heals deep suffering. The five mindfulness trainings help us cross this shore of suffering and bring us to the side of true awakening and love. We are called forward. So let us take a breath with the bell. So the invitation is to let it all go, whatever we just read and heard, and just letting it move through the body into the earth. It's made an impression. The imprint is there. And we let it make its way not getting too stuck in any one thing. And if we get stuck, we notice where. And then come back to our meditation or bringing in freshness into the body.
bringing in love and bringing in openness from the top of the head down the spine down the pelvic bowl down the toes into the earth So with the few minutes that we have left, thank you community for sharing in the readings. I'd like to invite any um, sharing that you may have that is percolating from the readings. Um, I wanna just say that often we take just one and spend a whole session on one. As you see, they're, they're very profound and uh, requires deep looking um, however, I know this is an opportunity I have once, so I wanted to share them all and invite you to continue to practice with them as you would. So, um, yeah, I just want to share that, is recognizing that they're very profound and invite in any sharings. In our practice, in our community, um, we, we, we like to do mindful movements. Um, so virtually we've managed to incorporate um, just a few, as you see, uh, around the spine, especially to get the spine moving in all the directions and to just get that energy that becomes so stagnant when we sit. And then the mindful walking is actually a, a big, a big part of our, our practice as well. Um, uh, and we do it often after sitting. Um, yeah, maybe not so much the mindful movements in some uh, sanghas, but definitely the mindful walking, slow walking. And if we are in a big enough space, like we're at a retreat, uh, we'll have, we'll practice slow walking outside for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes as a sangha. So you'll see just in Manhattan, 30 people walking down the busy street um, <laughs> at 12.30, um, slowly walking. Uh, and, uh, and it's an amazing thing, right? Um, what it, as you said, what it does to the body and the mind after sitting. And it really does create that spaciousness. Um, and it's a practice, right? It, you just, you don't, we always have to remember that meditation is not just about sitting with our eyes closed. Your eyes can be closed and the mind can be doing all kinds of calisthenics in there, right? Um, monkey mind could be having a celebration with the eyes closed and sitting still in, in, in the best lotus posture. Um, and so we can open our eyes and we can walk mindfully and we bring our mind and to our feet and their step and, and we're, we're focusing the mind, right? And remember, we, we, focus, we focus the mind, we bring tranquility, we focus the mind and this, this brings us the clarity so we can see more deeply, right? We start to notice the things, the, the, uh, what's really there, the, the, the characteristics, right? The impermanence, the, the fact that things, um, are the way they are, that it's not about me. Um, and so we can do that not just by sitting, following the breath, coming in and out. We can do that when we walk and when we move mindfully. And um, so it is a, it's a big part of the Plum Village um, tradition. And we, a lot of us try to incorporate it. And in our Sangha, we do it after every sit, uh, just like we did. If we have more time, it might be five minutes of walking. If we have less, like uh, it'll be two. And then we sit back down for a talk or a sharing and it just keeps people engaged and up, able to be pre more present as well. Thank you so much, Maricela, for uh, joining us again and sharing these practices. It's such a, a light 
sharing more deeply with one another. I'm not sure I'll have access to the chat. So if you'd be willing to send me an email, uh, the link in the email, I'd very much appreciate it. Um, as would, I think, many of the folks here to have the opportunity to um, sit and reflect more. This is a, a lovely introduction of this intersection that we all grapple with in different ways. This intention to live mindfully with deep care for one another and yet be fully present in a world where we see that not happening so much of the time. And it feels, at least for me, far less of a political action than this personal responsibility for an accountability toward my fellow human beings and the communities that um, I move in. So I appreciate um, you so very much and your calm, deep wisdom. And I just want to offer uh, the merit. May any goodness, insights that have come from this time of practice and reflecting together. May this extend outward to our friends and families, the communities that we are a part of and radiate out to all beings everywhere without exception. May all beings know the source of freedom. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.